Hello everyone, so uh, good afternoon. Welcome to our uh, webinar this time. It's all about mindful eating, a little bit different than the usual uh, diet talk. So my name is Nurul Latifa uh, Fauzan. So I am a dietitian from Columbia Asia Hospital PJ. So I hope that everyone is doing all right. It's MCO 2.0 and it's working from home again. There's a lot of uh, things we need to consider when it comes about food. So hence, which is uh, partly why today we want to talk about mindful eating. All right. So um, we can have Q and A session uh, after the meeting. Uh, sorry, the, not the meeting after the webinar. Uh, but also, um, if you if you're afraid that you might forget, that you can just type it in there, and then I'll just go over it later. So uh, why don't we get started? So I hope everyone had lunch already. So now you're at your comfort at home, and we can um, look into the first thing. Oh, I have some uh, technical issue that my one second. So in the meantime, OK, yep, got it. So mindful eating, um, the whole idea, it, it's just such a very uh, generalized term. So the idea of it is just we want to look at the art of presence while eating. So this is not the same as typical diet talk where we talk about diabetes and that, oh, you need to cut your carbohydrate, you need to cut your sugar, you need to cut your salt. There's just so many things that you feel very restricted and then it's some to some extent is actually stress people out because people feel like, oh my God, like when I see a dietitian, they're just going to tell me that I cannot eat this and that. And I have to give up so many things. And then usually people feel like, well, then I don't really want to see a dietitian because like I don't I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if, if I can commit to it. Um, and then people get scared and then they just plan to maybe I can just Google something and come up with something that I can do. And so they, they look into a lot of um, other alternatives which sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and we will go over that later and how that's related to our mindful eating. Okay, so when we talk about mindful eating, we just want to focus on our awareness. So uh, it ar arises from us paying attention on purpose in the present of the moment. And we're not judging, we're not judging ourselves. We're not judging the food. We are simply being there and aware and we are purposely doing it. And also in the same time, we want to respond to our internal cues, which is our appetite, our hunger, are we full? Um, so these are all like internally and externally um, awareness. And there you go. If you can see my next slide, uh, we're talking about how do we do this uh, step by step in general? So first of all, it's about what's in your mind. So you're pondering, you're checking in with yourself about your hunger for you eat and then you you may just be thirsty or you may just be bored or stressed. Um, so, so like, OK, we all just know the MCO just started and then you were just a um, few weeks ago, you were just going out. Uh, you have a little bit of a freedom and now you're stuck back inside and you have to set up your office and you have your kids at home. Uh, any other commitments that you have, there's a lot of uh, change in life and then you can be stressed and it, it's only normal for us to be stressed. Um, so we want to know if we feel like we want to eat, is it because really that we are hungry and it's meal time, or is it because of the life and our external surroundings. Okay, that's one thing, ponder. And secondly, appraise. Okay, we need to take a moment to take it in. We need to observe it. And we're looking at like, okay, what does this food smell like? Uh, what, what Do you really want it? Or you just, just because it's there on the table, someone bought it or someone bake a whole tray of uh, cake, sponge cake, and it's just there and you just want to like eat it or 
yeah, what is the reason really? So that's the second one. OK, and uh, the third one, we need to slow down a little bit. OK, slow down our brain so that our uh, slow down our brain so that you can keep up with our stomach and our digestive system. So you have to remember everything in our body. It's all connected to each other. So put your fork down in between bites so you can focus on the flavor. You are acknowledging like, oh, this tastes sweet. This is salty. Uh, this is good. This is bad. Uh, you need more salt. You need less salt. So those are the things that we need to process. So it's, it's the, the process when you eat and when you're assessing it while eating it. That's how we are. That's how we, we do it so that we are present for the moment. And also we savor, we, we enjoy the food. Take a moment and then um, so that you also get to taste every little change in the texture and uh, there, it comes with the satisfaction, you're indulging it. And lastly, you need to stop when you're full. OK, um, OK, there is um, some some people do it differently. Uh, some people, some family background, uh, some upbringing says that do not waste food and you should always, always finish your food. OK, yes. But so in order for you to avoid yourself from uh, wasting food, therefore the moment when we first take all the food on our into our plate, that's when we should ponder and think and take just as a good amount that we feel like we might need and then slowly take it in to avoid the wastage. Otherwise, still, um, uh, we're not really supposed to finish the whole big plate because we're not even supposed to take the whole big plate in the first place, right? Okay, these are little, little steps in general. Uh, what basically mindful eating is all about. Okay, then I just want to take us all um, looking into our digestive system. So we're going a little bit scientific here just so we understand why do we need to slow down? Why is it that our brain and our stomach is all connected? OK, if you look at um, the picture in your in the slide right there, the moment the food enter your mouth, that is the first starting point of your digestive system. It goes all the way down to your rectum and anus down there. OK, so all this process, uh, the whole entire journey is all 30 feet long. So that's about 914 centimeter. That is a very, very long journey for food to travel through. So imagine the amount of times and the digestive system, the digestive juices, the enzyme, everything that is needed to just chop it into tiny, tiny pieces and absorb all the nutrients which is why it's very important for us to chew thoroughly, take our time, uh, let it digest it properly, and then our, so that our brain also can keep up with the process and then it can send back the signal to us that, oh, okay, you are full. So you don't need to just swallow everything in at one go. And you, you don't even, sometimes when we do that because we're too hungry, we didn't even realize what the food really tastes like because we just want to put it all in. So that is actually a burden to our stomach also because it's giving it more tasks to break it further um, as what our body needed. So if you can see, there's a lot of organs there, liver, gallbladder, uh, pancreas, all these, they all work together hand in hand. They produce uh, enzymes, so all this help in the uh, breaking down digestion and uh, absorption. And lastly, when it comes out of our body, when we go to toy bin. OK, so there we go. We know it's 30 feet long, a long journey, so we need to help our body. OK. So have you ever thought um, that have I ever been mindfully eating? So if you ask yourself that, maybe we don't realize sometimes we do. Uh, subconsciously. So if you look at the pictures up there, you go to uh, Pasar Malam or Pasar Pagi and you just want to get some fruits. Um, do you know that some, some people would ask, you say if you want to buy mango, is the mango uh, ripe enough? Is it good? Or durian, durian season. 
So what would we do? We, we're going to ask like, does it taste good? Like, can we taste a little bit the Musang King or any other durian that you like? So that is part of uh, mindfully eating because when you taste it, you really like um, indulge it and let it linger around in your mouth because you want to really get the taste. Is this really something that I want to buy? Like, uh, would I spend money on this? Do I want to, do I know, do I want to buy this? So you are actually aware and you're assessing it before you're buying. So that's one thing. So good job, you actually did it. And another time when you're cooking, uh, especially new menus so, or something that um, you, you're experimenting on. So you would be uh, cooking it and then you'll take a little bit, uh, like a one spoonful and then you taste it. Is it taste, does it taste okay? Is it good? Um, is it too much uh, herbs or do you need a bit of uh, salt or sugar? So that, that's how we assess it. So that's part of it also. Or if anyone been to like a, a wine tasting, cake tasting, a wed, a catering tasting, any food tasting, that is also part of it because you would be um, tasting every different flavor because you want to choose which one is the best, which one that you want. And you would be there, your focus, your attention is there because you want to know the taste, the flavor, the texture, the everything about it. So that is mindfully eating. So imagine if we do this on a daily basis, more frequently, because we want ourselves to be more aware of what we're eating. So that is the, the concept of uh, what we want to do when we want to apply mindful eating in our lives. Okay. And back to our normal life. Was there a time when we're not mindfully eating? Obviously, there must be a, a few times or maybe a lot of times, especially now. Um, like watching TV, we got our popcorn or chips, uh, crisps or any other uh, food that we have on the table and then we have the whole family just watching TV or a uh, social gathering, which is maybe not right now, maybe after MCO, everyone will be like, hey, let's catch up and uh, have, a, have a food together. Maybe Chinese New Year. Um, or any festive season. So we would usually come together and usually we are not really aware of what we're eating because we're enjoying the moment, uh, which is uh, some people, uh, it gets to, to the extent that they're not actively thinking at all. So they have been like overindulging it. Okay. Or um, when you're doing work, uh, it's a work from home. You have your office set up at the corner of your house. You've got uh, in your drawer, what did you put in your drawer? Do you put uh, healthy snacks? Do you put just any snacks at all? Or you just have your office close to the kitchen. So you just simply walk a few steps to the kitchen and then grab like a bowl of food that you just got from the kitchen. So uh, that is the problem is we tend to have like a, a bulk of food right next to us and we're just munching throughout the day. and we are not aware of how much calorie that we're consuming. And uh, at the end of the MCO, all we know, we gain a little bit of weight. Okay, that is, uh, and another thing is uh, when we're driving, sometimes uh, when we were allowed to drive back then, some people have to drive for long distance and they would be, you would go to drive through, which is more convenient and you'll be eating while driving. So this is another example of, uh, when we are not practicing the mindful eating. Uh, during study, this is for uh, students right now, especially if you have uh, children, kids at home, uh, kids have to study from home and they get easily distracted or they're hungry and we just put the food right there and they are going to be with their books, with their laptop or tablet and they will be eating there and then and doing things so we're not even aware what uh, if they're eating the right thing uh, for for kids, especially they, they're not even processing it also. So no one is really paying attention to the food that is there. Um, and another one during vacation, of course, uh, everyone wants to enjoy vacation, which is OK. Nothing wrong. 
with having a great vacation when we can. Uh, but also we want to be mindful. We want to know that, OK, so now it's lunchtime. We're eating this. Um, now it's uh, breakfast time, so we don't want to skip breakfast. So we're still um, aware and one willing to do the right thing without feeling too pressured into it. Um, with so many rules and regulation as a traditional uh, diet that we have heard before. OK. Mm, next one is we want to know also what is the benefit of mindful eating? So why are we talking about mindful eating? So what like what happened if we don't? What happened if we do? So obviously there are a uh, few benefits that comes with it if we want to start to practice this in our life. So this is just the general. Okay, generally, if we practice this, what do we get? First of all, uh, food satisfaction. You, you feel satisfied with all the flavor that you get and you take your time. Um, you feel full, so you feel satisfied with the, what you get from the food. And you don't feel to the point that uh, beating yourself up because you feel so guilty, you eat so much. So that is one thing. And actually, there are studies that say uh, they have been uh, looking at successful weight loss when people are more aware of what they're eating, even without a strict diet protocol. OK, uh, and we also get um, we also be more aware and uh, we can be more consistent in what we're doing, in what we're practicing. So basically, if you think about it, it's more like um, relearning how to do things right without, without pressuring ourselves too much. That is the benefit. So now, after we know all this benefit, we want to, uh, we want to look at just like one particular focus, which is the food portion. Uh, because when you are more mindful, you are looking at the food and you are assessing the food. So food portion wise here, I'm not giving you what portion uh, that you should be eating, but I just want you to think about what is it that you're having now without even thinking about how much you should be having. OK, so if you look at the history of the plate size here, this is um, a very uh, fun fact about uh, plate size history. Back then, say in the 1960s, dinner plate is just about 8.5 inch. And then 1980, it becomes 10 inch. 2000, 11 inch. 2009, 12 inch. We realize that our plate size, our plate is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the bigger it gets, the more food you can put in it and the more calorie that's in it. And it also affects our perception of the food. If you have a big plate, of course, that when you put even just the right amount of food, you will feel that it's not enough. But if you use the right size of the plate you, and you put the right amount of food, you feel like it's it's fulfilling. The Psychologically speaking, your eyes and your brain and your perception it, it will give you some sort of like a comfort feeling that, OK, like this is good amount for me. That is uh, one of the reason uh, how your eye and your, uh, your your brain and psychologically how it affects our food selection. Um, minus all the calorie counting, we're not talking about that. We're just talking about how do we feel about it, right? OK, so this is the example of what I have just talked about. So let's say on the left side, it's the 8.5 inch. And maybe on the right side is, is your 11 or 12 inch. OK, we're, we're getting the same amount of uh, portion, the same portion, same amount of food, same calorie. But we just put it in different plates. One is like smaller plates and another one is bigger plate. If you get the big plate, you would feel like this is like not much at all. Like I probably have to add, add up more and I probably have to eat something more. Like once I finish this, I'm going to scoop in some more. Or maybe before even you start eating, you're so hungry. You're like, this is not enough. I'm just going to add some more. OK, but if you get a small plate, 
um, and then you fill it up just enough. You feel like, oh, this is this seems like a like a good enough amount for me. And it, it's all the our mental and how our thought process go through with it. Okay. All right. This is uh this is all the different sizes containing all the same amount of tuna or chicken or carrots and wild rice. So in this experiment, we put the same amount of food in the plate for each plate. And then there, I, from this picture, I would like you to see what do you feel when you look at 8.5 inch plate? What do you feel when you look at the 11 inch and 12 inch? In terms of your uh, preference, uh, if all these plates, they're all laid out in front of you, but you don't know is if it's the same amount. No one tells you the amount. We just put it, OK, choose your plate. Which one would you choose when you're hungry? Um, and why do you choose that? So those are the thought process that uh, usually that run through our minds and the things that we need to be aware about of why we make certain decision and how it affects our calorie intake and how that subsequently we uh, it affects our weight gain or weight loss our satisfaction or do you feel guilty or do you feel pleasure those are the things that uh, we have to start think and be more aware of so how do we do it so let's say now you you feel like all right i think i want to start uh, be more mindful of what i eat uh, this is more like a, my 2021 resolution, for example. Still not too late. We can still do it. So how do we do it? All right, a little tips from the very beginning, even before you see the food right in front of you. Uh, when you go shopping, you want to have a shopping list. Why? Um, not only it saves you some money, because usually uh, when we go shopping, we plan to buy two things and then we come home with 10 things. Uh, one, save your money. Secondly, when you actively think about what you want to buy, you tend to, and then you also know that you want to be healthier. So you tend to go for something that is slightly healthier that is already there. It's like a, an agreement. It's a commitment to yourself. And you do it yourself, not your dietitian doing it for you, not your doctors doing it for you. Basically, you tell yourself, okay, I'm willing to buy, um, whole grain bread, let's say whole meal bread, for example. So um, when I buy this, like I will start to eat my whole meal bread and uh, this is my first attempt. Maybe out of 10 items, five items are healthier items as a start. And another five is your usual uh, whatever that you buy usually. So it's a good start at least. And then you know, OK, maybe next shopping trip, I can increase my healthy items to six or seven items. So slowly you'll, you'll take charge of what uh, you're buying. Then when you stock in in your kitchen, uh, the items that you stock there, there are a lot of healthy choices there also. Um, OK, that is one shopping list. And second, your appetite to eat. Um, also, I forgot to mention when you're doing shopping, you should try this. Maybe you should experiment. Uh, go shopping when you're hungry versus going shopping when you are full. Um, and then try to assess, does it make any difference in terms of your food selection uh, from the shelf? Do you tend to grab all those snacks from the shelf because you're hungry? Because then you can eat in the car later. Or um, can you resist that and then you feel this is very hard or you go there with full stomach and then you can just easily comply to your shopping list. OK, this is one thing that you can experiment in your next shopping trip. Um, and appetite to eat when you're eating, you want to have the appetite. You want to, of course, uh, we, we feel more of a satisfaction when we are hungry but not when we are very, very hungry to the point that we, we're so starving. Uh, like some people, they would purposely uh, drag their meal time so that they can eat a lot more later 
and they feel more satisfied. Some people do that, which is a very uh, unhealthy habit. So in order for us to make sure that the appetite is just good enough so that we can still enjoy our food is to not skip our meal time. So maybe we can try by uh, just following the meal time and then just eat whenever we feel that we're hungry. So you have to acknowledge your hung your cue that your the, the body, the signals that the body is giving when you're actually hungry or you're just bored or stressed. OK, small bites. It's the next one. So try to uh, take one bite at a time and take your time and focus on, on the bites. And you have to chew in uh, ideally 20 to 30 times by right, because then uh, there are also studies that says the more you chew, the more because it also drags the time. You're taking more time when you eat. Uh, you are giving your body more time to process that there's food coming in and you're giving, uh, you're allowing your brain to have time to process when it, your stomach is actually full. So your brain will tell you, hey, I'm full, so we don't need to eat more. So indirectly, you manage to control your calorie right there. OK, and the next one is cooking class or food experiment with family. So now that everyone has more time for family, it's the time for maybe you can have um, Sunday R&D, food R&D family day. So maybe you want to experiment on simple things like um, healthy pancake with your kids. So you're experimenting on your whole meal, flour, or um, any healthy things that you put in there. You just found this new recipe. You want to try it out with your kids. Part of your effort to spend uh, quality time. So this is also the time when you try out the food and you really assess the texture and the flavor and also being healthy in the same time. So you don't feel forceful. You're actually enjoying the process in the same time. All right, that is one. And uh, limit screen time where uh, you are eating. When you're, when you're supposed to be eating, you really dedicate that time for food. You are not juggling so much in between your meal time and then uh, work or study. So have a, have a routine of when it's uh, lunchtime, then everyone will have lunchtime, even though we're all at home and we still have a lot of uh, work to do. So it's part of how to get ourselves in the routine. And as I said uh, just now, you need to allow your brain to process everything. So allow 20 minute time rules after a meal. If you want to know if you're really hungry or is it just because um, the stress or some other external surround uh, factors that affecting you wanting to eat more because it does take 20 minutes for the brain to process and then let you know. Yeah, so we want to use all of our senses, our eyes, our nose, our ears so that we are more aware of uh, what the food is like and uh, we are focusing more, we're more present. So we'll go deep into that in the next slide. So how to use your senses. All right, so I'm, I have an example here. This is an apple. OK, so when you are seeing it, what do you see? You see the color It's like pinkish red and then you see the shape. And whatever that stands out. Oh, for this one, uh, it's got a sticker stands out. It's something that we don't want to be there. So you you know and you're seeing it, you're aware or you're looking at the stem, the bottom, the tops. That that's how we see our food and then feel you touch it. Is it like soft? Is it ripe or is it hard or is it rough, squishy, depending on the food that you're touching? And then if uh, if you can hear anything, is it crunching? Like if you take a bite, is it is it crunchy or is it just soft? Does it make any sound? No. And smell. So even apples, you can smell it. It smells very fruity, very nice. Or if it's not apple, is it like a spicy, like uh, maybe rosemary? Does it have a rosemary smell or any herbs? Right. So when you taste it and you take a bite and you taste it, uh, what does it taste like? 
when you first started chewing and then even like after a few few times of chewing it does it change in terms of the flavor is it more intense is it um is the texture is it melted in your mouth what what is it like so those are things that when we take a step back and we just relax and enjoying it so this is the the kind of enjoyment that we get from food and indirectly it gives us satisfaction and indirectly it helps you to manage your calorie and everything without even calculating it okay next all right hunger and satisfaction scale so we talk about like you have to know if your body if you're really hungry or not so are you hungry or you just you just want to eat so this is uh, for example a scale that you can use when you want to assess yourself uh, there it's one to ten so if you're hungry just take a step back and think what do you feel in your body when you're when you're hungry is it to the point if you feel like you're having headache and you're shaking that's obviously you're low in energy so that's like too hungry already or if you're hungry that your stomach feels empty it's growling so yes you are hungry or neutral um, you're no longer hungry but you're not so satisfied this is like after you eat um, you already ate like um, maybe you, you you are trying to be healthy so you're eating something you don't count calorie or anything you just eat something healthy and then you feel like I feel like I could eat something because I'm not quite satisfied but also I'm not hungry anymore or six to seven satisfied so you are you are eating slower and you feel that okay you are satisfied at this time so you know that I don't actually need uh, to eat more even though I can see there's two more pieces of the cake on the table all right so eight to ten is the one that we don't want you're too full to the point that you have to lay back in your chair and you just have to relax because it's just too bloated so we don't want that because that means you definitely uh, eat too fast you put in too much your brain hasn't even processed it yet that you're too full the only reason that you know you're too full because you already feel so uncomfortable and then the guilt after that all right this is how we want to access our hunger uh, when you want to determine whether uh, should I eat, should I not eat, should I eat snack, should I eat small or big meal, then you just have to look back at this, reassess, and then take the appropriate action that you feel is best to take for yourself. All right, so I have a little quiz time, um, which I would love to see your result in the chat section. So feel free to just kind of throw in uh, the number later. What is your result? Because that would be exciting. So are you a mindful eater? OK, I want to know how many of the audience is a, uh, considered as a mindful eater or how many are not, which is fine. OK, so what you need now is take a calculator. So you can use your phone, you can use actual calculator, you can use your laptop. Okay, get a calculator ready and then when um, when you see the questions, so every question, uh, it carries a, a mark and you need to rate yourself. So if you feel like this question, you agree with this question, uh, it's not a question, it's a, it's a statement mainly. Uh, if you agree with this statement, uh, you would say give yourself one, yes, almost always. If you feel like it's frequently, then number two, if you feel like only sometimes, three. If you feel like nope, never, give yourself a four. So keep on adding, say question number one, yeah, yes. Okay, then you put one, press one on your calculator. Go to question number two, if you feel like no, so you plus four. So you have to add every mark, all right? Okay. All right, this is the first five. Uh, statement number one, I am unaware that I'm hungry or full until later. So don't think too much. Just on daily basis, whenever you eat, are you aware you're hungry or full? Or not really, you just eat. Only later on you realize. 
So if you are doing this, you should be giving yourself one. So yes, almost always. Or if you're always, always very uh, conscious about your intake, then yours will be four. Okay, that's question number one. Question number two, uh, statement number two, I am stressed out. If you stressed out, yes. Okay, then plus another one. If you are, nope, never, I'm never stressed. I always do my yoga, so plus four. All right, number three, I don't realize the taste or appreciate the food. Like, you don't process it, you just kind of eat it. Does it taste good? Does it not taste good? Don't care as long as I'm full. Okay, that's number three. And number four, I force a control what I eat. You Maybe you follow certain diet. Maybe you eat one time per day. Maybe you do keto diet or any fat diet. Um, you do, what else? Uh, paleo diet. Any diet that you do, that means you are controlling and forcing yourself to some extent. So if you're doing that, then you can either go for three, two, or one, depending on how strict you are. Okay, and then number five is, I eat when I'm not hungry, because you see the food on the table, so you just come and get it, and just walk around and eat it. So if you do that, you can be either at one, two, or three. Okay, that's the first five. I hope you get this. Um, and then the next one, I avoid, avoid eating when I'm hungry. Uh, this one, maybe, like I said, you do uh, uh, eat one time per day or twice per day or a certain amount of time per day. Even though when you're hungry, you're not going to eat because it's not time yet. So if you do that, then yeah, rate yourself. Um, second one, I find myself rushing when eating. Uh, you just take a plate and then you just finish up and then done, go. Maybe you're too busy. All right. The third one, uh, I didn't realize I was eating. Uh, maybe you have a few snacks um, in your drawer. You just grab it and then you just chew it while doing your work on the laptop. Okay. And next one, I eat when I feel stress. Uh, you're just so stressed. There's just so many, too many things. Uh, even though staying at home, it's actually more work. So, and then you just eat. You don't even realize it. Then yes. Uh, last one, I believe I can achieve my goal by having strict diet control. You feel like there are a certain diet that you should be doing and you have to be very strict on it. Then only you can achieve your, your goal. Maybe your goal is to lose 2 kg, 3 kg, whatever your goal could be. So if you're doing that, then it's either 1, 2 or 3, depending on how strict you are. All right. So I hope you get this. We only have uh, 10 more questions. Uh, and then the next one is, I don't think of anything much before I eat. Simply eat. Uh, and then after that, it's hard for me to be present and focus in the moment. Let's say you lose your focus. You are not being present. So it's, it's, uh, it's the second one. And the third one is, I don't love or accept myself and my body. You always uh, criticize, uh, uh, like you're self critics. You look at the mirror and then you just like, oh, I don't like the way uh, my belly is. I don't think my body is, is the ideal one. And you feel very stressed about it. All right. The next one is I don't always feel like exercising. You just don't have the passion there. Like you just don't want to do it. All right, last one. When you look at Instagram, we spend a lot of time on uh, computer and phone these days. Look at Instagram, look at all this ideal body, thin body. How do you feel about this? Does it affect you negatively? So if you feel bad every time you're watching it, then you can, you can rate as appropriately. This is the last one. Uh, when you look at it, media, it, it affects my mood. You just you just get really sad, any feelings negatively, then you can um, rate appropriately. Or I eat and live on auto mood, basically automatically. Wherever there's food, that's when I eat. I'm happy. I don't mind. It's okay. Um, or you just 
usually don't think you order anything, grab with anything. Um, the next one is you feel stuck. Like you feel like I'm so stuck. I really want to do some changes in my behavior, how I eat, how I think, how my body is, but like I don't know what to do. I just know that I feel stuck. And now we are also stuck home. So everything is stuck. Do you feel that? If you feel that, then it's either one, two, three. Next one is I feel emotional. It takes over and I didn't realize what happened. This is uh, related to emotional uh, stress eating when you are so emotional. You just want to eat something sweet or you want to eat something salty. So if you feel that you are driven by this, then uh, you need to rate yourself also. And the very, very last one is I eat so I can manage uncomfortable with strong emotions. So this is when the moment you feel like you can't really handle how you feel, then you start to look for something to eat. It's sort of a way to comfort yourself. Uh, if you feel that, then it's one of the emotional eating that you should be reading. OK, so these are the questions, sort of like a brief assessment to see. So once you total up all this, just make a total of this. Total up the score and then you divide the total by 20. And then let me know if you want to let me know in the group chat. You can let me know if your score is four, which is the most perfect score. Very unlikely for uh, anyone to get this. Uh, but like if you get three, that means you are mindful enough. Three, four, one or two, that means um, on the lower end of the bracket, which means that there are a lot of things that needs to be done. Then you can look back at the questions. You can uh, reflect to yourself like which area of my behavior and um, my uh, habit that I need to change. I need to look at just look at the small things and start small. All right. So that is all from me for the whole mindful uh, eating talk. I would like to really thank you for all the attention and being present, be mindful with my uh, talk today. Um, definitely we'll take some questions right here. So if anyone would like to, let's see, maybe I'll look into anyone has questions looking into the question I hope that the whole uh, the whole idea of mindful eating gives you an uh, an idea that this is not about I have to eat certain way, I have to force myself to do certain uh, diet. No, it's about like what am I willing to do for myself and how am I going to go about it without feeling so pressured because indirectly when you do it out of your willingness, you are more likely to be able to be healthier because you know you want to select for a healthier option and you're aware of it. OK, so. OK, so actually there is no questions right now. So I hope that that actually helps uh, everyone. OK, so that's all from me. So if you have any questions, you can always direct it to um, to our our host of the event and I think we can always send you a follow up email and then send you anything that you need to know. All right. Thank you. Bye.